Well hello everyone, what is going on? It is the Almighty Jeff and we are finally here with the beginning of 2021. The year of terror is finally coming to an end and I am going to do my very first channel address which a lot of people typically do on YouTube towards the end of the year or the beginning of the next to talk about the year that they've just had and the plans for the channel going forward. So. Obviously this is the first one I've done so I'm going to be a bit sketchy with things. I've got a, basically a bit of a plan as to what I want to cover. I'll have timestamps in the description to different parts if you're only interested in certain things but I'm hoping to keep this thing quite concise just so I'm not boring you all with unnecessary details. So I thought first of all we'd get the analytical side out of the way and have a look at how this year has affected my channel in terms of the amount of views I've gotten, the amount of hours watched I have and the amount of subscribers that I've picked up over the year. So starting off as you can see this is the views per video and this is a lifetime thing as you can see. So this goes from me beginning my channel in mid 2016 although this one is solo because of the fact that well I only started it I think July of 2016 so this one's obviously I got 1184 views in that first year which to be fair is not quite that bad considering I've only done for six months and obviously because I've never done this before I'm gonna do a brief summary of how it's gone so far. So these different markers all mark the end of that year and not necessarily the gap in between so this isn't 2016 to 2017 this is the amount of views I've culminated on the 1st of January 2017, that's the 1st of January 2018 and so on and so forth. So you can see that between these years, uh, between the 1st of January 2018 to the 1st of January 2019, I actually managed to pick up quite a few there, so that was quite a good year for the channel. And then it sort of stagnated again between 2019 and 2020, but as you can see this is easily the biggest growth I have had on my channel thus far, going from 14,736 views on the 1st of January last year to 38,141 this year and I think that's the amount that you get in the year not necessarily the total amount because I'm fairly sure I've got more views than that but that is how we're doing so clearly in terms of views this is definitely my best year and that could easily be explained by the fact that this year has had seen a lot of people go into lockdown and have to stay at home due to the pandemic so I don't expect this figure to continue to go at such a degree in the future in this year in particular hopefully I mean I hope that we manage to get things under control with the pandemic and we can get vaccinated and the pandemic can slowly come to a conclusion but yeah I think this is a bit of a fluke I hope it's not a fluke I would like this to continue to grow and grow and grow and every year to get better than the last but yeah that's how we did with that and you'll actually see this graph is very similar when it comes to my watch hours. Now there's another thing I'm going to show you in a little bit which is the vidIQ little tab that I have on my channel but you actually need to get monetization uh, 4,000 hours watched in a year and I am on 3.8 I believe as you can see the total throughout 2020 because it's going to be per year I reached 3,817 and 31 minutes, which is, you know, it's getting there. I mean, my biggest challenge towards monetization at this point is definitely subscriber count. That's got a ways to go, but considering I have quite a low subscriber count and yet such a high amount of hours watched per year, I mean, one could imply that that's because people are watching but not subscribing, but also I could imply that the people who are subscribed to me are watching my content, and that's a lot better to have a smaller number of subscribers and a higher watch time than I think the other way around. So that's my, my way of looking at it. Perhaps I'm being just a bit more optimistic. But that has actually been a pretty steady increase over the years and then obviously has spiked in this year. Again, I can definitely put that down towards the pandemic. And then finally, we come to subscribers. Now, I very nearly made two milestones in 2020. I hit, finally managed to hit 200 subscribers in March, I believe, and slowly over the course of the year we have been inching closer and closer to 300. I did reach 298 on the 31st of December and that has dropped to 297, but that's no biggie really. I expect probably within the month of January I should be able to finally hit that milestone, it'd be nice, I'd love a bit of a tit if I didn't, but yeah. Anyway, so as you can see, yeah, that's, um, I mean, 
2019 was a bit of a stagnation of a year for subscribers. Uh, well, I mean, like I said, this is the amount that you've picked up across the course of the year, not your total amount, of course, because obviously I'm much higher than 131 subscribers. That's just the amount I've picked up in one year, which is in itself very impressive for a channel how small that is, because that is nearly half of the amount of subscribers that I had at the start of the year. I can't quite remember what figure I was at. I think it was somewhere around 125, maybe 150, something like that, and to have gone 131 extra is spectacular. And I'm hoping that this figure can continue to escalate. I do want to show you guys quickly one more thing, and that is Social Blade, which a lot of YouTubers who want to have a look at their statistics over the course of the year will turn to. I'm quite new to this, so don't be too surprised if I get confused by certain things. But this is just the look at the views and the subscribers that I picked up over the last month. Uh, specifically going back to the 3rd of December 2020. So you can see over the course of this month, you know, views have, have uh, fluctuated, which is to be expected when you're coming up to Christmas and New Year. What I'm particularly interested in looking at on this page is the subscriber count. So as you can see, it rises progressively, then you lose some, you gain some, you lose some. This is just sort of the area of thinking, come on, let me just, let me get to 300 before the end of the year, and then it got closer, and then it dragged you away. And then, obviously the 28th was a pretty remarkable, I picked up three within the space of, I think it was a few hours, I think I was asleep when I actually picked these up. I went to bed with 295 subscribers, I went up to 298, and yeah, that was quite a shocker. And, you know, there was a chance I could have reached 300 before the end of the year, but I did lose one on uh, 1st of January, so, you know, sucks to be them, but you know how it is. Um, I'm not too fussed with statistics, as I've previously said. It's something that I just sort of glance at now and again. It is something that sort of, if feel like if you get too invested in stuff like this, it can knock your ego a little bit. And I try just to keep it, you know, this is just a casual channel. I'm not really too fussed about subscriber size and view size. It's just something that's nice to have. And down at the bottom here, you can see my yearly estimate, in which it picks up the things, how many subscribers. I've made a net gain of and how many views and all that and how much money I could have made which is projected from either £9 to £143 which is a bit of a difference but there you go so yeah if that's something completely wrong then as I said this is my, really my sort of first time doing it properly. Uh, if we look at future projections which is also something that is quite interesting it sort of projects where it thinks you will end up with how many views and subs you'll get by certain points in your career. Now, this is something that I'm particularly not really a fan of looking at just because of how pessimistic it is in the fact that it thinks it's going to take me four years and two months from this point to finally break a thousand subscribers. I'm not sure if I will probably still be around by that point if this thing hasn't become very significant. Um, it's obviously, like I said, I'm not 100% fussed about this, and to be honest, with the growth in subscribers out this year due to the lockdown this could be even quite optimistic of Social Blade thinking that it will carry on at the rate that it has. I would like to think that I'd be a thousand a lot sooner than what this is projecting. I think probably hopefully within like the next two years that would be nice. I'm not saying that I will and I'm certainly not saying that I'm going to drop this completely if I don't reach that but if other things start to take priority in my life and I just don't have the subscriber base to make it worthwhile doing this out of my own time. That's all I'm saying. Like, it, it could be a thing, it might not be. And it's even predicting that I probably would have reached a million by then. By the time I hit a thousand, it's just say two and a half million views. Which, you know, is pretty impressive. I'd be happy to have that many views on my channel, certainly. I mean, even when I hit a, th a million, that'd be something worth celebrating. But to have had this many views and only this many subscribers shows that I'm clearly not doing something right. And I know my sort of content is quite niche because not only am I a gamer, which is a very saturated category of video on YouTube, 
it's my status as a completionist, which might put people off, and also the fact that I do let's plays and not walkthroughs. Difference being in both cases, as a completionist, that means I don't just go for the missions, I don't just go for the main content, I'd go for everything, and as a let's play, it means that you're sort of joining the journey with me. With quite a lot of my games, increasingly more so nowadays, me going in blind with this game means that if I stumble along the way, you're there to witness them stumbles, and if you're trying to follow a guide, to completing a game, stumbles is not really what you want to see. So it's like I said, it's quite a niche thing. So I'm not expecting to hit it big like PewDiePie and Jacksepticeye and Markiplier and all the other bigs. But yeah, like I said, these stats are a bit pessimistic, and I would quite like to reach this figure a lot sooner than Social Blade is projecting. But that is how it is. That actually moves us quite nicely on to Patreon, which is obviously something that I started up earlier this year, and it has been a lot more successful than I thought it was going to be. When I started this, I was expecting, oh, I knew one person would be a patron because he said that he would be, but to think that I've had three consistent patrons since the first day that I made that video, and there's been no drop, well, of these three, they've been consistent throughout the entire year so far and I did get one that came in and then dropped out a few months in but that's completely fine I totally expected stuff like that but I'm I'm just amazed that I've had three patrons <laughs> for like this long and it has blown my mind so and I know sometimes when I'm editing back videos and I can't sort of rush the outro where I'm thanking my patrons it might sometimes come off as if it's sort of so ungrateful and I'm just sort of rushing it through for the sake of an outro it, it, sometimes I watch back and I was like that's coming off as so nonchalant but it really does it is truly appreciated and every pound that goes into the Patreon account goes straight into YouTube whether it goes to playing games or going towards me getting new equipment or consoles or stuff like that like it's not just spent on uni alcohol which to be fair now that the pubs are shut, I can't really excuse that anyway, but <laughs> that sort of thing. Everything's there. So, what I wanted to quickly do, uh, in regards to the Patreon, is talk about the plans for spending and what has already been spent. So obviously, new games that I've got, that have been recommended to me, or that I've bought as a result of polls on the Patreon, I have used the Patreon fund for that, so I mean, the only game that's been put through a Patreon poll so far for Dead Redemption 2, which I got with the money through the Patreon account, and most of the rest of it, uh, other than the odd new game that I fancied playing, our Steam sales were, it was a game series that I was planning to put in to play, that's what that goes towards, so a new series for you guys to enjoy. I've not got any new equipment as of yet, I'm fairly stable with my computer and my microphone and this and the other, it's all quite good quality stuff, especially for the level at which I am. Major investments to come into the future, I'm not 100% certain on it yet. I do want to get a PlayStation 5, uh, more for the fact because the last game I played on the PlayStation 4 for the channel, I think, was Doctor Who The Edge of Time, and if you watch that series, you, I was really disappointed by how that came off, not by the game stands at all, I thought it was a really good game and it was definitely one of my favourites to play over the course of the year, but as a series, my PS4 has a lot of issues when it comes to the fan in particular, and it gets very noisy, and it's so annoying, because I've tried everything I can to fix it, I've cleaned it out completely, and it still gets really noisy, and obviously that's been a problem that's been pointed towards the PlayStation 4 since it came into play, but not every one of those is YouTube gamers who cares that much about the microphone picking up the noise. And there's whole swathes of commentary that I had to edit out of those videos because of the fact that you couldn't hear me over how loud my PlayStation 4 was getting. So rather than getting another PlayStation 4 and hoping that the fan works, i probably going to make my next step just to upgrade into PlayStation 5 because most of the games on the PlayStation 5, on the PlayStation 4, sorry, are compatible with the PlayStation 5. So I'm thinking just of skipping to that point, but obviously it may be a while yet because 
Obviously, if you don't know, the PlayStation 5s are completely out of stock everywhere, and the only way of getting one at the moment is through scalpers on eBay, and I am not going to sink to that level. Definitely not. They're charging £700 to £1,000 for one, and you can get a good PC for that. I mean, I've got a good PC. I spend about £1,100 on that when I was working. So, yeah, I'm not going to fork out that much money for PlayStation 5. When it becomes readily available and it's a, a price that I'm willing to pay out for, then I'll get it, and then we'll probably see more PlayStation exclusives make its way back to the channel. Until then, I'm probably going to stick mostly to PC gaming. I'm not too sure. But, as well as that, I do want to do a quick recap on Patreon, so of the tiers that go I have on the page, in case you didn't see that video, and you're new to the channel, and you haven't gone back, because I've not made like a highlight thing on my channel, where I've, it's the sort of thing that if you saw it when it went up, you'll have seen it, and if unless you went hunting for it, you won't have seen it. Basically what this is, is I have five tiers, and I have made some slight adjustments to it over the course of the year. So hopefully, as you can see on screen, I do actually have five tiers going on, and you'll always hear me refer to these three tiers in particular at the end of every video that I do. So for one pound a month, which I do have a Patreon at this level, is that you will get an on-screen credit at the end of every episode and I should say at the beginning all the, the tiers are cumulative so if you choose the next tier along you'll still get the benefits of that first tier as you can see at the bottom all previous tiers also apply here so you only get benefits by increasing your tier you won't lose anything so don't worry about that but as I said at one pound you get an on-screen credit at the end of all of my videos and that is something that I, you know, is quite easy to fix with a little go to Photoshop and I can add names in, take names off, it's no biggie. And it's just a way to always make sure that as long as you are a patron, you will always get credited for the videos that go up during that month. And it's a nice way to be acknowledged, I feel. Uh, jumping up to £3 per month, that is where you will get a channel link or a link to some social media page always in the description of the videos for as long as you are a patron. What I have on my actual Patreon page is a pinned comment at the top where you can drop in any links of for new patrons who have a channel link or a Twitter link or Instagram or TikTok or whatever you guys want advertised. You can post a link in there and I will put it in the description of all the videos for as long as you are a patron. Uh, and again, obviously, all previous tiers apply, so you'll still get your credit at the end of the episode as well on screen. And at £5 per month, you get a verbal shout-out from me at the end. So I have two patrons who are currently at that level, and again, it stacks as well as these two. What I'm adding to this, because I've been doing it anyway, and I think it it's a bit more than just me saying your name, because at the same... I, if I was a much bigger channel, that would probably have more of an impact than someone who's just about scraping at 300 subscribers. I can understand that. It's more of a novelty thing. It's like if you think my content is worth £5 a month paying, other than that, it's not really something that jumps out at you. So I'm also going to add to this at the start of 2021 is that I will also, if you have a YouTube channel, I will put that in my channel box. So you can see it's at the bottom, it says check them out. You can see I have my two £5 plus patrons in the description. These are the same channel links that you'll find in the description. And I'm adding that to a thing where if you do decide to pledge £5 per month, for as long as you are a patron, your channel will also appear in the description down there. And then these last two ones are the, are the juicier ones, I'd like to think. Um, I only have one patron who's... Well, actually, he's in the uh, £20 patron slot. But what this is, obviously, I keep saying, but I know I've explained at the start that they all stack up. They do stack up, so you'll get all these benefits up here as well. What this also gives you access to is a poll at the end of the month, or what should be the end of the month, if I do have new patrons or a game that's not been suggested. And that is that you have the ability to suggest a game for me to play now. I like to say that over the course of the year I have had some people suggest games to me to play and say oh can you play this, can you play that, when are you going to finish this series, can you play this game instead. Every game that I get asked to play gets considered. Like I have a long list of some people have seen it of games that I plan to do and every suggestion I get gets added to that list. But I pick out that list at random. Sometimes I have multiple series going on and I just want to pick a quick and easy game to fit in there. And if one of those games is something you've suggested, there's a good chance I'll play it. At other times I have such a list of things that I do want to get through and no guarantee on how long I'm going to be doing this to get through them all. 
So if you really want to guarantee that the game you suggest gets played, this is the way to do it. Now you only have to do this once. As in, once you post that suggestion for a poll, if you're a patron, then I will pick that game and I will put it into the first available slot. At the moment I don't really have the amount of the, the fan base to sort of manipulate that to the point where you could suggest a game that's really expensive but it's really short so it ends up costing me more to actually pay for the game than to actually play it. Obviously the only one person who suggested a game for me to play was Red Dead Redemption 2 and they've been a patron since day one so I've more than paid for that game. But like I said, what, what the difference is between these two tiers, I'm not doing a very good job at explaining this am I? But at the Parts in Crime level you do get the option to pick a game that's be between roughly 5 to 10 hours at a completionist rate, so that's between about 10 to 20 episodes, what you'd expect. And hopefully, it's actually the game isn't as expen more expensive than ten pound a month. Because obviously, that means it's me paying for the extra amount for something that someone else has suggested. And like I said, I'm not expecting any of everyone to like jump on this and me. I'm like about fifty patrons all screaming for me to play some two-hour game that costs about fifty quid. Like that's not going to be a thing. But. Yeah, so as you can you can see in the description for yourself, so for £10 a month you'll get access to a special poll that I'll post once a month, last Saturday of the month. My original rule with this is that as long as you were a patron I would post this poll every month, and regardless if I had a currently ongoing game that someone had suggested you can select another one, but I did change this when I realised that, obviously, with the Red Dead Redemption 2, I'm still playing that, and that was suggested to me back in April. So if games were still stacking on every single month since that point, then I would have, I would never be able to finish that list. So what I changed this to, although I didn't make a video on it, I did change it in the description, whilst um, over the course of the year, and that is that I will play one game at a time per patron. So if you are a new patron and you haven't yet suggested a game, that poll will be there for you to comment on and that will be the next game I play in the next available slot. If your game is currently ongoing, then you will not be able to suggest a new game until the game you suggested to me has been completed, but you also do not have to stick on as a patron for that amount of time. So if you do just want to select one game, pay for a £10 per month or, or a £20 per month, depending on how long the game is, just once, post your selection in the monthly post. I've not been doing it for quite a while, but that's because, like I said, I've only had one patron at this tier, and he's already suggested he gave me to play. So if I do get a new patron at this level, then I will post that poll at the end of January, and then you can post your game in there, and then at the next available opportunity, I will definitely play that game, as long as it's nothing dodgy, obviously. So I thought I'd move on just to sort of reflect on what we did throughout 2020 in terms of games that we played. So first of all, let's have a look back at the games we started the year on, i.e. games that carried on over from 2019. Those being Grand Theft Auto V, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, Soma, Batman Arkham Origins, The Witcher, and Life is Strange 2. Now, most of those series were very near to completion, if not basically completed. The only two I would really say had still some ways to go was Grand Theft Auto V and The Witcher. Obviously, GTA V and The Witcher went on quite a ways into 2020, whereas Black Flag, Soma, Arkham Origins, and Life is Strange 2 were either one episode away in the case of Life is Strange 2, or very close to conclusion at the start of the year. It is a game that we started and completed within 2020, we managed to complete Outlast 2, Assassin's Creed Freedom Cry, Alien Isolation, Assassin's Creed Rogue, Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate, The Simpsons Hit and Run, The Witch 2 Assassins of Kings, Saints Row Get Out of Hell, Doctor Who The Edge of Time, What Remains of Edith Finch, Journey, Resident Evil 2002, and Guys of the Wolf. Obviously, when you're looking back on the list, quite a few of them are very short games, so the list does look as if we managed to get through a lot more, or we did in terms of actual games, obviously. But a lot of those were no more than never really got out of single figures. Like I think Freedom Cry, um, Arkham Origins Blackgate, Hit and Run, Get Out of Hell, Edge of Time, What Remains of Edith Finch, Journey, and Gaz the Wolf. I think the longest there was Arkham Origins Blackgate, and that was a spin off of um, Arkham Origins. That didn't last long at all. The only significantly long ones were Outlast 2, Alien Isolation, Assassin's Creed Rogue, Witch 2, Assassins of Kings, and Resident Evil. So we, but that's still a fair few to get through, and I've not hated a single game I've played this year, which is a great thing to start with. Some of them are a bit, a bit odd, but there you go. 
And just a quick reflection to the current four games that are carrying over from 2020 to 2021, which are Batman Arkham Knight, Assassin's Creed Unity, Red Dead Redemption 2, and The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. None of them are coming close to conclusion. I think the furthest along we are in terms of one of those games is Assassin's Creed Unity, of which we just hit about 70%, and that doesn't include the DLC, so that could still see us going on into about April, I would assume. Uh, Arkham Knight, I've no, no idea how long that's going to last. Um, same with Red Dead Redemption 2. We're just about finishing up chapter 3, and there's six chapters and two epilogues. And obviously a whole mass of other stuff that we got to do. In The Witcher 3, we're barely scratching the surface. That is going to be a very long game. I won't be surprised if that is second to Skyrim in terms of my longest series going on. And that could last throughout the entirety of 2021, so that remains to be seen. So what I thought I would do is a quick reflection on the, what are some of my favourite series were this year. I might try and do this annually. If I do decide to do these channel addresses on a yearly basis, I think I will try and have a look at what some of my favourite series I did of the year were. And so I've picked five of the series that I previously listed. Some of these are series that are still ongoing. Some of them are short series, some of them have weird reasons why they're my favourites, but I thought before I got into my top five of the year, I would do some honourable mentions. So, first of all, I want to give a special shout out to The Witcher. Now, I did play a little bit of this, I think I never got past the prologue in Kaer Morhen before I actually started the Let's Play. And I was a bit iffy on it, I was surprised by, it was quite enjoyable, but I was thinking this is, to do this as a whole series is probably going to drag and I'm probably going to hate it. And to my surprise, it's probably my favourite of the three I have played so far. Obviously, I'm very early on into The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, and at the rate it's going, it's going to surpass The Witcher as my favourite. It is a very good game from what I've played so far, but it's still way too early to comment, I feel. But The Witcher had a really good story to it. It's, it's dated remarkably well. Like It's obviously not up to date with your modern RPGs and stuff like that, but I was blown away by how much I enjoyed the story and how sad I was to reach its conclusion really and The Witcher 2 I did enjoy but not to the same level as The Witcher and I think you can maybe tell that throughout the series it's probably one of my least favourites of the year I'm sorry if that's hurt any Witcher 2 fans but I think The Witcher has definitely blew me away with the aspects of gaming this year. Uh, my second honorable mention goes to Assassin's Creed Rogue. Now this is actually one of my favourite Assassin's Creed games so I was very excited to read it and I very much enjoyed it. I wasn't disappointed by my replay of that game. I think it's unfortunate by how short it is uh, in terms of Shay's actual story. I think six sequences wasn't enough to do him justice. I understand that at the time they were putting all their efforts into Assassin's Creed Unity. Still didn't do a good enough job with it. <laughs> Rogue is vastly superior in almost every respect when it comes to Assassin's Creed Unity. But, yeah, I didn't think it quite met the top five of the year. I did play some remarkable games this year. And Assassin's Creed Rogue is fairly average for an Assassin's Creed game. But I think the story of Shay's defection is remarkable and it's a good time. I just enjoy playing Assassin's Creed Rogue. And my final honourable mention goes to Saint Shaw Get Out of Hell. Again, I didn't feel it was good enough to justify this as being one of my top five considering how short it was, but the reason why this is in my honourable mentions at all is really because I managed to play this with Ron as I did with Saint Shaw the Third and with Saint Shaw Four. When the two of us get paired up together, it is just such a good time, and we just have constant banter, and we rip into each other, but we also have such a good time, and St. Shaw is one of our mutual favourite series, so we both have a lot of appreciation towards this particular franchise, and this is no different, despite how short it is. It was just ten episodes long, but it was it was a fun ride, and you can never get in. I mean, you get to play as Johnny Gat, like, seriously. What more could you want from a game, except to be longer and it not being mostly based of activities with a bit more story to it. But it was still a good time, so I did want to give it an honourable mention. So, enough with all that malarkey, let's actually get to what I consider to be my top five games of the year. And we start off with number five, which again was a very short series, but I think it definitely justified being one of my best of the year, which is What Remains of Edith Finch. Now this was only a four part mini series on the channel that sort of carried on just towards the end of summer when I was waiting to start up Resident Evil, but I needed a bit longer because I knew I was going to be doing that with my housemates. 
but just needed to plod along for an extra couple of weeks. And this is a game I'm so glad was recommended to me. As I said at the end of that series, it's really one of those games that justify video games being classed as an art form. It was just a storybook in gameplay form and the stories were amazing, the graphics were amazing, the voice acting, as limited as it was, was really great. And I just had such a fun time with this one. I feel like it's one of them things that I'm never going to forget. And it's definitely been such an experience to play that game. And I'm so glad that I managed to experience that with you guys the first time. It's not one of those games that I've played in the past and just wanted to share with you guys. It was a mutual journey between us. And I'm really glad that I played it. In fourth is a game that I would not have put on this list anywhere near this list when I was playing it. Because it was a game that annoyed me to death when I was playing it but it's one of those games that in hindsight I have grown to appreciate a lot more and that is of course Alien Isolation. This is one of those games that is not really my forte because of how much it relies on patience. It's a great game if you're playing it on your own and you've got the atmosphere I had the atmosphere right, I had all the lights turned off, I only had the lights on above my webcam so people could actually see my reaction to what was going on but as someone who wants to like constantly keep things moving and also the fact that I can only keep things to 30 minutes and if it's 30 minutes and you've moved 3 feet then it's not going to be great content so as a let's play it's kind of a hard game to play and a vast amount of times it felt so ridiculous and so fixed and so unnecessarily difficult but it truly is a masterpiece when it comes to actual gameplay it is such a wonderful recreation of that original Alien feel and in fact I went into this I knew what Alien was as a franchise I'd seen clips of it I'd seen the iconic scene of the Xenomorph bursting out of John Hurt's chest but other than that I had very limited experience with Alien and it actually inspired me to go and see Alien and Aliens and for a game for me to start with the game and then move on to the films and then I was watching that thinking oh my god like Alien Isolation got this down to a T. It was truly remarkable and it really was great. It's a game that I think I might want to replay on my own just to finish up the rest of the achievements at some point. It's just when I have the motivation to do it because of the fact I go into it thinking I'm never going to finish this game. It's just so difficult but at the same time I do have to sort of appreciate what a masterpiece of gaming it actually is so I've got to give it that content. At number three is a game that would not have made it to this list were it not for the circumstances around it, and that is Resident Evil 2002. This game is not a good game. <laughs> and you can tell by all of our reactions on that series that it is a game to be absolutely ripped into. I can very much appreciate it for what it did and the, the path that it has paved for the future of this series, but the remake of this is just terrible. <laughs> Like, the acting is so wooden. Some of the puzzles are just ridiculous. But it's such a good time. It was such a good time, honestly. I feel like if I was playing that game on my own, it would not be one of my favourite Let's Plays. It would not be anybody's favourite Let's Plays. It would be quite a dull one, because I probably wouldn't see as much humour into it as was open to me by Matt and Ollie. And the whole stories that we made up about characters, especially surrounding Chris, just made this series one of the funniest series and it was definitely at the time of recording that my favorite to do of the week because the three of us would have such a laugh with it and we just made jokes all the time it was definitely one of my highlights of the year i couldn't give it number one or two spot for game gameplay and personal reasons but it was definitely something i'm so glad that i picked up and i'm so looking for unbelievably looking forward to going through the rest of the series with those two lads they made that series so funny and I'm so glad that they came along with me to do that. At number two is a game I feel sort of cheating about putting on this list because I've not actually finished it yet but I really couldn't not put it on the list because it has been an absolute masterpiece to play through thus far and that is Red Dead Redemption 2. I had no doubts at all when I was going into this that this would be a contender for one of my favourite games of all time because Red Dead Redemption is it's in itself one of my favourite games of all time and it was such a joy to play through back in 2016 to 2017 I think is when that lasted and to pick up the sequel or the prequel it should really say going into how much time was placed into this game I think they were working on this very soon after the original game came out so much detail has been put into this game and it really pays off because every single character that you meet in that game has such an impact on it and it's remarkable just how much you can do and 
I didn't think it was possible to beat John Marston as one of my favourite gaming protagonists, but Arthur Morgan has really knocked it out of the park, so that is absolute props to Roger Clark, who is the voice actor and the motion capture for Arthur. But the entire Vandalin gang is remarkable when they are together. It's like, even when I'm not doing actual episodes, when I'm doing the bits in between, like when I was just waiting around for item requests to come in, just the amount of detail that goes into that gang is remarkable, and you really feel for them. They are, they do become a sort of extension of your own family, so when there's bitter rivalries, you feel like you've got to pick a side, and you feel, you feel the pain that they're all going through, and when people die, you feel hurtful. You feel like someone that you know has died and stuff like that and it is remarkable that a game can make you feel that way and I'm so glad that it is going to be a series that is probably going to be one of the longest ones I'm doing and I'm only halfway through the story. I'm glad and I'm also very nervous because I know a lot about what happens in this game. It, it came out in 2018 like I've definitely been spoiled on a lot of things this game and I know there's a lot of heartache to come. We've only just started with that but at the same time I'm so looking forward to experiencing the rest of this story so there you go. And at number one, it really couldn't be anything else. It's a game that I picked because it made me feel comfortable. It cooled me down after playing Alien Isolation, and it's just, it had to be number one. It's been one of my favorite games for 17 years, and that is The Simpsons Hit and Run. This is such a comfort game to me. It truly is. It is a masterpiece of gaming, and remains to be many people's nostalgic favourite and a lot toward the past and you see polls all the time on Facebook people demanding that it be remastered or a sequel comes out but I think it's great that this is just sort of a standalone on its own I really wouldn't expect the sequel if they do make a sequel or even a remaster to be as nostalgic as that first game really was and it was a real joy to play through this child one of those ones that it was not a case of if it was more when I'd always wanted to play this game on this channel and I'm so glad that I finally managed to do it. And the fact is, it reached out. Because, I mean, I have, like I said, I only have a small community on my channel. But I have people on here that remembered the game and got to relive that nostalgia with me. And people who never heard of this game before and went out and got it because they enjoyed watching me play it so much. And that is just what an impact this game can have. It is truly remarkable gaming. And I would recommend it to everybody. It's a game you could just have fun with. And it's full of... Easter eggs and references to the actual series, which is a personal favourite of mine, especially the earlier stuff. It's just a fun time. So, for the small portion of people who haven't played this game, it's definitely recommend with tag stamp of approval. So, now I'm going to put in a little mention to hints at what could be coming in the future, but in 2021. So, obviously, we have two series that are sort of ongoing and are going to be seeing through to the end, which is Assassin's Creed, which has been going on since I started in 2016. We began, one of the very first Let's Plays was Assassin's Creed, the original from 2007, and right now we're through to Unity. That is going to continue. Nothing else is going in that second game slot. We're going to be following up with Assassin's Creed Syndicate, then we're going to be moving on to the Chronicles games, and then on to Origins, Odyssey, Valhalla, and whatever games come out in the future. It's just going to continue until we reach the end, which I don't think we ever will. Uh, secondly being Resident Evil, which we have only just started and granted there will be games that take up its place in between slots when we are not recording together because I do want to get through as much of that series with Matt and Ollie as humanly possible. That might not be possible in the future, I'm hoping that it is, I'm hoping that we manage to keep in some sort of contact after university to keep in, but that is way too far ahead for my... <laughs> But for current me to be going through, I could probably be watching this video back in like five years time thinking, oh buddy, yeah, it's no good on our end. But for the moment, I do want to get through as many Resident Evil games with those two, so like I am at the moment, I came home for Christmas. I've had to play through a couple of odd games in between, so you know, Guys of the Wolf, for as interesting that game was, I did only fill up four episodes and we still get another week until I go back, at least I hopefully for a week, unless Boris decides to put us all under national lockdown again and for the people with guns pointed at everyone's doors making sure you don't escape but I am going to be filling up with one more game which could potentially lead into another series that I play on this channel at the moment I'm just thinking of it as a one-off 
but I do plan to go back to it at some point, but at the moment it's just going to be the sort of thing that fills in the gaps between me being able to record with Matt and Ollie. So the Resident Evil games are not going anywhere, we will be resuming Resident Evil 2 probably at some point in late January, early February. I'm not too sure how long the game I'm planning on starting on Tuesday is going to last, but we'll have to see. In terms of the other slots, obviously two of those games uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt and those series have no signs of disappearing anytime soon so those two are fairly stable and I've not put any plans in for games following that we'll have to see when we get there but the slot that sort of remains half open is the first game slot which is currently occupied by Batman Arkham Knight now I predict we're probably about halfway through that series at least we're about 44% of the way through the main story at least according to the in-game statistics and I think we're slightly further ahead with the AR challenges, which is why I'm willing to say that we're probably about halfway through because of the fact that we'll run out of AR challenges and then we'll just be able to dedicate time to the main story and to the DLCs that follow. Once I finish Arkham Knight, I do plan to move on to Agents of Mayhem just so that we can sort of finish off the Saints Row saga. I know they've been in talks and rumours of a fifth game potentially on the way. I think they officially said that Saints Row 5 was coming, but they didn't announce anything else. So we'll have to see when that comes out. And I might also, one day, go back and play the original. I would just need an Xbox to do that and I'm hardly loaded. I'm not gonna be able to get one of those quite easily, but it's something that I do plan to do one day. So that is what it comes to the Patreon page. The situation with the Patreon tiers is that as soon as the slot opens up, that becomes the key priority for getting a series in, unless it's in the Assassin's Creed slot. That's probably the only one that I'm not going to shift around. I'm going to keep that in game slot too, but I'll be willing to shift around the others. Uh, so even like my original game one slot was going to be followed by Red Dead Redemption 2 after we finished GTA 5, but we finished Arkham Origins Blackgate first, which meant that I swapped them over. So now Red Dead Redemption 2 is on Thursdays and Arkham Knight is on Mondays. So, just so I can move on to that Patreon game first. And that will be the situation with any new suggested ones. I'm willing to completely flip around games if they're going through in a certain order to give that one priority. So, if you do have any games to suggest, then please check out that Patreon page, check out that pledge, and I will guarantee that that game probably comes in after... Likelihood the next game will be after I've finished Arkham Knight, which I said, like I said, it would probably be halfway through, so it might just be a case of a couple of months or something like that. That will be added to the roster as an immediate priority as soon as that poll is placed, even if you just Patreon for a month. So that's something to check out if you're interested in me playing a particular game. And I think that's about all I wanted to talk about in this channel page. Hopefully it's not going on, it's not going to be completely unedited because I have been talking for 50 minutes now and I've occasionally had to start to take uh, drinks of water because I've just been talking for so long but my head's starting to dry up. Um, before we wrap up, I do have to say that in 2021 there is a chance that I may be taking some periods away from the channel. As a final year history student, the chances are that I will have to take some time away to dedicate to finishing up my degree, finishing up coursework, stuff like that. I don't have any plans as of yet to specifically take some time off, but it might just happen. The best way of learning about that if I am going on a break is either through the Patreon page where they get notified straight away, or through my Twitter page, which is always in the description down below. And I will always post any significant updates down there. And finally, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to people who have made 2020 such a good year for my channel. Obviously, I've got to start out with my basic YouTube, basically my YouTube partner in crime, Ron, over at Long Play Central. He has been my first subscriber and remains to be such a help over the year, not only just for the fact of being the co-host for Saints Row Gathered of Hell and the co-op missions and heists in Assassin's Creed Unity, but also as a friend, someone who I can confide with when it comes to YouTube stuff or even personal stuff, and for someone who always has my back on YouTube, who always is there, who watches every video that I put up, and I watch all of his, of course, and I know that this has been a year of significant growth for him, but also some frustration to him, because he is also at a situation of not being able to quite reach his goal of 2020, and in fact has started to slowly get away from him, and obviously I know that he's just posted his video on his 
look back over the year and as a result he has said that he will be taking a step back from YouTube at least for a couple of weeks in January. So if for some reason you are subscribed to me but not subscribed to him, I don't think there are many of you. I think we have quite a lot of crossover between us two considering that we're so involved in each other's channels. But if you are not, definitely head over to One Play Central. I'll put the link to his description down below, but he's in the description down below in every video I put up because he is one of my five, um, three pound plus patrons. So check him out down there. Let's try and get him to a thousand subscribers. I think he definitely deserves that and it'd be a great way to start off the new year for him and just to go back to show him that we do love him and the content that he puts out. So definitely worth doing that. Secondly, of course, I have to thank my two amazing housemates Matt and Ollie, not only for being such great friends to live with, obviously, more tolerate, but <laughs> they are amazing lads. They're so funny and they've been so supportive of the channel and the fact that they take time out of the day to record with me and to have made Resident Evil the success that it was and the absolute amazing series that was and one that I'll never forget. So massive thanks to them. I mean, I do basically pay for the takeaways when they do it. <laughs> it comes to a point where they record so much and they'll say, take away, and then it'll usually be me who's got to pay for it. But yeah, but off. as a matter of protocol, they do it basically for free. <laughs> so massive thanks to them. And I hope that we see more of the Matt's Corner and Ollie's Corner in the years to come. Thirdly, I definitely want to say a massive thanks, as I said previously, to my patrons. They have definitely supported the year going forward and have definitely made it more so than ever worth coming back to every video just to show that they are willing to support my content financially. The fact that anybody's been willing to do that has been remarkable to me. And so to Ron Hyler, Ever the Snake and Laura Haggerty and also to Andrew Corbin who was a patron earlier in the year, thank you so much. Every month that you have supported has truly meant a lot to me and it has gone, definitely gone back into the channel. It's also sort of kept me motivated to go on that people actually like my content, which is kind of crazy because it's crap. But t thank you so much. It's truly appreciated. And when I say it in the outro, even if I sound half asleep when I'm saying it, just know that every time I say it, it comes from the heart. I'm so appreciative of anything that you do for my channel and I hope you stick around for 2021 but if you can't that is absolutely no problem whatsoever and you will always be very special to this channel. Then obviously I have to thank my family. Obviously it, 2020 has been a very odd year for all of us and I'm very lucky that I have a family that I love very much and I have had to live with for most of the year because we had to be moved back very suddenly when the lockdown was introduced in March and had been at home until September when I moved back to university. Uh, so obviously our family was very supportive of the channel and of me personally. So to get me through the year and to have not made a mental breakdown just goes to show that I definitely have some thanks that I hold for them. But finally, I have to thank you all, the audience, everyone who's stayed around to watch a video, who's dropped a like, who's commented, who's subscribed, who's given me positive feedback, who's given me critical feedback, not rude feedback, but if something could be improved, I'm always willing to take that on board. Even just watching the video, it really means a lot to me when I see the amount of people who are watching my videos on a daily basis and who are giving me feedback, who are just actively participating in the channel, it really warms my heart. I feel like I've developed this small community on YouTube and I'm really glad that you guys have stuck around as long as you have. Every comment, and it makes me very happy when I get feedback on the stuff I do and when people are very appreciative of the stuff that I do, it truly means a lot. I mean, when I get comments from people saying that they have started up a new game just so that they can use my Let's Play, as a walkthrough, which is very weird because I think there's a definite difference between a walkthrough and a let's play. A walkthrough being something that is made by professionals to help you with the thing, but let's play is sort of relies on me personally to make a mark on it because a let's play is sort of a journey along with somebody else, if you get what I mean. So the fact that people have said that they were willing to buy games so they can use my guides as a playthrough and then reach the end of the series saying like hey I've just you I just finished this game using your let's play it was great and it's like it blows my mind that I've actually had that impact on people's lives so yeah thank you so much for all of that I think that's about covered everything I wanted to talk about so 
Before we wrap up, let me take a second to thank my amazing patrons. My five Pampus patrons are Ron Hyla and Ever the Snake. You can find links to their channels as well as my other three Pampus patrons in the description down below and on screen your secrets by one Pampus patrons. Thank you so much everyone. It's truly appreciated and it goes a long way to helping the channel so I do thank you a lot for that. And if you wish to join those patrons you can follow the link in the description down below to my Patreon page but you don't have to do that because at the end of the day I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did be sure to like, comment and subscribe and also be sure to share the video and I will see you guys in 2021. Bye guys. Everything